So the miracle of YouTube allows, oh, a few weeks to elapse in just a few seconds. But on reassembly, we have confirmed the reason for finding that failure. Uh, if you recall from a few seconds ago, the main shaft nut uh, on disassembly we found had torn off the lock tab and backed itself completely off. And all of this stuff here was basically loose on the shaft as we took it apart. That allowed excessive play in here. The reason that happened is it's, pretty, it's a pretty delicate trick trying to get this space to be properly taken out. You can see some sideways movement there, and that's created by the where, where that bearing seats on its spacers at the end of the main shaft here. So the way it was put together is it was tightened down and seemed to be correct. The lock tab was uh, bent over and everything was called good, but the tension was only in the lock tab because this bearing was not seated on the inside. So what that did in a fairly short time, you can see here's our old damaged case and the actual center bearing package. This thing feels like it's got sand in it. It's really rough bearing because when it was assembled, the preload was put in between the races such that the ball cage was severely loaded, uh, creating a false tension here, which, you know, as soon as it ran and that bearing wobbled loose, this simply... The, the torque of rotation bent the lock tab off and undid the nut. So what we've been trying to do here with a couple of test assemblies is to put the correct spacing. Uh, the problem results from the stock bearings having these bigger inner races. You can see how those protrude, but these are no longer available. I could not find a good one. You can see the actual one removed, equal races. There's about 95 thousandths difference that must be accounted for. So I've made up the difference here by using what would have been the thicker shim provided with the MED gear set. It needed the, uh, what is it, a 2.5 millimeter, as they call it, about a tenth of an inch, instead of this one here, which is about 68 thousandths. So I added the difference. We've been assembling it here, and we're looking to be able to tighten this nut such that we're not loading that bearing wrong, not putting a load on this bearing's position one way or the other, and still allowing just enough free play in all of these gears to maintain this perfect resistance-free freewheeling before they're engaged to the lay gear below. Engage the lay gear, uh, put the actual lay shaft. Speaking of which, have you ever seen one like this? Part of the gear kit, no holes, no oil holes, solid, heavy, immensely strong. Let's take a quick look in here and see. We work to get that lay shaft, again, as my camera moves, it kind of skews the view. And then you can see what we tried to do is to have perfect engagement of those gears, which then allows these shift sliders, the range of motion needed to fully engage the gear without touching the face of the lower gear, the, the lay gear cluster. But in any event, this, this setup here should prove absolutely um, as good as it can be for this case and this set of gears.